flick them on. Wow, nice. Hey everyone, it's Rob Farrow ATV here and I just received these brand new, just released Halo series. These are the three inch lights. And with some stickers. They look really good. And these have the removable covers. These are a spot floodlight combo. These are from Novesites. Dot com. The uh, the other two sets I had on, the first set there was a two inch that was a different series, and the four inch was a different series altogether. Uh, these are hopefully going to be the this is their top of the line new release. Hopefully these are going to be the lights. They're mostly meant for or they're designed for off-road trucks and jeeps and whatnot but we've been putting them on the ATV and they've been doing pretty good so we got a little bit different set up here but we're gonna we're gonna give them a good shot they're uh, 48 watt 6000 K white light 3450 lumens and you got a combo I, I believe they have uh, this little ring around the take this off so you can see it around the whole edge because it's like a driving light so that stays on and then you got floodlights and you got spotlights and then if you want the the orange, you put the reflectors on. So it's got uh, really good coverage of uh, everything this time. These are toted as uh, New Pro Class LED chip, three chips. The new generation of LED chips that offers high power and up to 316% improvement in performance. The Halo series comes in uh, the three inch, which I have here, the four inch, which are longer with two light sockets, and the six inch big lights, which I wouldn't be able to fit on the ATV, but they'd be good for uh, Jeeps and trucks off roading. 3450 lumens. They got a hard anodized machined aluminum housing removable lens so I think these are going to be an awesome accessory to the uh, the Outlander so we're gonna put them together and put them on the bike and there's some of the uh, the features Voltage 10 to 30 volt DC color temperature 6,000 plus or minus 5,500 K color temperature 6,000 K lamp material aluminum length 3.43 inches width 2.72 and height 3.62 and you got the combo beam the drive beam fog beam spread beam that's how they go together and all the parts that should be in the kit. All right, the front of my 2023 Can-Am Outlander 700. I already have the uh, the brackets mounted. Bought these off Amazon. I put the, the lights on there. I like the lights in the pod. It's protected so that 
any trees or whatnot, don't take the lights off. These are the lights, and I noticed that they come with a nice black cover protection. So that's pretty cool too. So if you can see here, I've utilized the what were originally the light mounts, Can-Am stock ones, because I put a uh, hook on there for my for my winch for the snow plowing, whatever. So I have these mounts that I got off Amazon. So I'm utilizing those. So because I have it this way, the lights hang down. So because the lights hang down, I'm gonna have to mount them bracket, smaller bracket than the old one. So that bracket will fit in there and the screws will go in there. I'm gonna have to mount them hanging down, which means unfortunately the lens covers, which are meant to be this way, say on the side of a, a truck or a bumper of a truck, with no sight up. Now, unfortunately. <laughs> We'll try it with the black one, you can see it better. So, uh, no sight, forgive me, but uh, I'm gonna have to mount your name upside down. So, or sideways, but it won't be that way, unfortunately. But that's the way it is. So, you've got the brackets, you got the two screws, two lock washers. They give you the, the Allen key, so lock washers go on the screw, and the screws are going to go into the side of the housing, like so. And I'm putting the, the mounting bracket on this way. You can turn it around and mount it the other way if you want, but I'm putting it on this way so that the lights are just behind the bumper so they don't stick in too far, just because of where I got the, the bracket mounted. I can get them in right on <laughs> if I if you turn that bracket around you might want to put that bolt in first but uh, I can get them in so get a washer and a lock washer and a nut I believe okay that's two ready to go all done up they look pretty cool, that's for sure. Well built. Well, as much as I enjoy working on the four-wheeler, <laughs> I've done a lot of work on four-wheelers over the years. Um, I think this is going to be the last time that I uh, change out the lights. I think these are going to be the lights. So I'm going to mount them there. There's lots of... Uh, Lots of thread left going through the, the mount, which is good. The washer, lock washer, and the nut. And if you drop the nut, you better hope that you can find it. Well, I guess you don't need a you don't need a wrench under here because there's little ridges that hold the, the bolts in place. So that's what it's gonna look like. When it's back far enough, I can hit stuff like I normally do. And I'm just going to take these wires and I'm going to run them around the same way around the other ones. Around the corner here. So I'll tie wrap a little slack. Tie wrap those around like that. Alright, that's the lights on the front. I'm going to lock them up a little bit until I, I figure out the angle I want them at. And now my furnace goes on because it's still cold out here. We're still in winter around here. So now, try not to put no side upside down, but these are the caps that are going to go on. 
They seem to clip on pretty good. They're not going to pop off. Right on. Now we're going to put the wire harness okay. in. Harness. Like I said, the two long leads. And the lights. And tangle the mess that I made. Now, that goes to the... Where am I going to put this now? That's originally where I had the... Uh, the other I can probably put it in there and I'll have enough to come back with the uh, with the switch and then I got plenty of wire nice and braided wire too nice and protected now the only thing is, these two, I have to figure out what they're for. I'm pretty sure that they're for the running lights. If I put that there, run these up here, then there'll be lots, lots to go up front. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. Oop, take out my... Move my uh, charger plug and got a hole there. All right, I put a couple screws in, but uh, the little plastic tabs are very, very tiny. And uh, I broke this one. This one's holding, but I put a tie wrap in here just in case it's not going anywhere. And now. Like I said, we've got tons, tons of cable this time. We were almost short on the last set, but this one's got tons of cable. We're going to run the, uh, this on right. And then get screwed in and it's watertight. It's got a little rubber gasket there. We're going to run this up with the wire. So that is what I will do. I'll run under here and alongside here through this, and then back to the harness. Just because of the connector. I want to put some dielectric grease in here anyways. I usually grease my my joints. Okay, so dielectric grease. Just fill up that little plug. you get this on the right way and there's a little groove there a little groove along the top there and there's a, a notch there goes in they're all really all these sets were fairly easy to uh, run no real issues if you have any issues you contact them they're uh, really good with service really a little bit of slack there the box is set start from the box Power will go on last, and now these all can go up the run. And the heater shut off again. I think it's getting warmer outside. I don't know how it is where you live, but we're, we're just into March now, and it's actually been a really easy winter. Barely any snow and only a couple cold spells. Really itching to get out riding again. We did a couple rides when it got warm in the winter. And it's been kind of cold and miserable since. But anyways, as we go on up, we go on up. So that's looking pretty good. Nice and compact. Go 
I done here? <laughs> what have I done? I didn't wind them very good, my fault. is only going to have to go up and then back to here so I have probably about six feet of slack well, that's good lots semi good so it looks like I know what I'm doing even though I may not <laughs> And as we jump over here, we'll add in the switch wire. Good. Cheap tie wraps. I don't want to buy the expensive ones. <laughs> Too cheap. a tie wrap snapper all you do is you take a pair of pliers you grab the loose end right tight to the thing and you twist them and it'll twist off and it'll leave a nice edge you won't cut yourself you can really you just take them and snip them off and leave an edge on there if you go like that you'll slice your finger right open not fun tell me how I know <laughs> okay I don't want to I don't want to squeeze those hose ones, so I'll do it pliers right on the end and just twist. It comes off and it's good. Just like that. It's going to get wound up and then it's going to come back. This is the, uh, the switch. So it will get. Wound up like that and fit it down here somehow. And then the switch go back on. I don't want to put that box back on yet in case I got to run some wires somewhere. But we'll just tidy up the slack for now. That way it's not in the way. And at the same time, Coming through the front here. So, so that'll just drop down in there. Put each under somehow or other. Figure out where it went. Okay. That one's going to be the right light, not the wrong light, the right light. This one will be the left. Left light. We'll have to wrap up any loose wire bundle them underneath so that I'm not filling up this pod compartment here all right so we've come down here I'll put the slack just on the uh, the frame here so pick up all the slack that we need here like that and then that'll plug into there that way that'll leave that a little bit slack up there so it's got movement and I can come across up here like that 
so perfect. A little bit of dielectric grease in there. They're waterproof connections. I got the seal here, but I do like to put uh, dielectric grease in there, anyways. Put that on all the way. They wrap here. I already drilled a hole from the other one. And that is that. So I'm going to tie wrap both of those together, the other side and this side, just at the, the junction here. And I'll keep those together. to the frame, it's out of the way, it's not hitting anything. Grease. Plugged all the way in and that one's already tie wrapped there. You can see that. Well tie wrapped here is coming off and hooked in here and should be good there. So it's out of the way of the A arm swinging up and down. I gotta make sure on the other side that I left enough room to. Alright, lights look really good. Run them through the pod there. Down to the power. I haven't looked them up yet. Alright, we now know what these wires are for. They don't apply to ATVs, they apply to vehicles with automatic headlight systems. So the yellow would be attached for the daytime running lights. They would uh, come on when the daytime light are on in the vehicle. And the green is for the headlights. And when the headlights go on and off, that would trigger the lights to go on and off. So that's what those are for. There's a, a good online install video on their website, novasites.com. So check it out. So we can uh, we can finish this up. We're just going to uh, cap these wires off. I'll cut off the ends that stick out and pull them back and probably put a piece of uh, shrink wrap on there Okay, like I said, this comes with the option of putting a little bracket on it to, to mount it, but 
I'm just going to mount it right there like that using the, the two-sided tape that they give you. I already put uh, rubbing alcohol on there. that. Running. running yellow. Turn those off. Brighter than hell. <laughs> All right. Novesites.com. I'm going to run them into uh, some darkness tonight and uh, see how they do. All right. Nighttime. We're going to do a little test of the Novesite uh, Halo 3 lights Let's see how they do right now I got the uh, low low beam uh, stocks on right now driving lights on doesn't make much difference cool thing is that uh, it tells you it's in uh, orange now or yellow and white so you know which one you hold it goes off okay the big ones Wow <laughs> That was nice. That's incredible. That's what I wanted to see. Those would be really bright on the trail. They're right on the road here. That's really cool. These are what I've been waiting for. These are nice. That's the high beam, low beam, you can barely even tell. Hope the camera's picking it up good. I don't know what the settings are. The battery was dead when I first attempted to use it. Been sitting for a while. Shouldn't have reverted back to other settings, but who knows. Even better than the uh, the two inch lights that I first had from uh, Novesite, because I only had just the spot. This has uh, the flood integrated into it, so you get the whole area covered instead of just the uh, two little beams. Perfect. I'm gonna go try it on the back trail. Okay, this is where I tested them before, down the little creepy trail here. I'm gonna flick them on. Wow, nice. Nice, very nice, very nice. Haven't been down this trail for a while, as you can tell. Ooh. That's, uh, I've shut the uh, I've shut the stock lights off completely. Light or low, high, can barely even tell. You don't even need them. Oh, 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 oh. Just a two-wheel drive here, so <laughs> slide in. Very cool. You can see all our snow is pretty much gone. It's, it's been like this all winter. I don't mind it. I can do it without winter. Oh, front end sliding. Very nice. I'm very impressed. Well, these are the three inch uh, Halo series from Novasites.com. They also have the uh, four. 4 inch and the 6 inch you can check them out on their site thanks for watching everyone
there's with just the uh, driving lights on. It's pretty cool. Very nice.